We will now call to order the meeting of the Muskogee City Council for January 24th, 2022. Let us stand for the invocation by Council Member Tracy McGee, followed by the flag salute. Let us bow our hearts and minds for a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father Yahweh, thank you for this day. Thank you for your grace and for your mercy. Father, I ask you tonight to give us an open heart and open mind to receive you. Guide us as we take on our city business. Cause each and every one of us to know you. I pray this prayer in your only son, Yahshua Messiah. Let us say hallelujah. Let's look for the flag. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Here. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Here. Ivory Van. Here. Jamie Stout. Here. Evelyn Hibbs. Here. Alex Reynolds. Here. Stephanie Morgan. Here. Tracy McGee. Here. Tracy Hoos. Here. <coughs> we will now consider approval of the minutes for the special call city council for January 3rd, 2022. City Council regular session January 10th, 2022. I'll take other necessary action. Do we have any corrections to the minutes that need to be made or a motion to approve? Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Further discussion on those minutes. Roll call. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Item number one. Consider approval of final payment to Darris Contractors LLC in the amount of $6,926.12 for the wastewater treatment plant HVAC restoration project number 2019024 or take other necessary action. Mr. Reed. Good evening, Council and Mayor. Uh, the funding for this project was under the Clean Water State Revolving Fund. Uh, Darris Contractors was the winning bid at $322,600. Uh, the co total contract amount was consistent with the total bid of $322,600. And the remainder of the contract is $6,926.12. Um, the project scope was to replace the HVAC system and the existing administrative building and wastewater treatment plant, including a new boiler, chiller, exhaust system, ductwork replacement, associated electrical work, and control work. Uh, there were no change orders on the project. Subcontractors were all compensated. There were no liquidated damages. Uh, the final clo closeout uh, compensation is being requested this evening. And punch list items are completed. The inspections were completed. There were no claims related to the project. And there were no complaints related to the contractor. <laughs> we asked for uh, approval of the contract. Thank you. Do we have any questions for Mr. Reeves or do we have a motion to proceed? Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reeves. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. The item passes. Thank you. Item number two. <coughs> Discuss and take action to make the city of Muskogee a Purple Heart community. So to members of the council and those uh, present as well as those watching, uh, I have made several mentions in times past of the fact that uh, I come from a military family. My <coughs> great uncles, uh, two of them served in World War II. Uh, they were proud to serve their country even during times when they were not treated as equitably as they should have been at the time. Yet they never disgraced their flag. They never felt any ill will towards uh, their country. They were proud of who they were as Americans. Fast forward to where we are today. Uh, we've been fortunate to have uh, Mr. Don Nichols uh, in our community, who is the head of the local Purple Heart chapter in the city of Muskogee. And after visiting with him and members of that organization, I thought it would be fitting to uh, bring this item to the council to declare that Muskogee would be a Purple Heart community. 
this gives the proper reverence and recognition to all of those uh, recipients of the Purple Heart for the sacrifice of bravery, uh, selflessness that they've committed to our community. For those who may or may not know, Muskogee is a strong veteran community. Uh, we have a high veteran population in our city. These men and women uh, serve uh, in their post-military duty to make our city great. I'm going to read the proclamation. Uh, whereas first created as the badge of military merit by George Washington in 1782, the Purple Heart is the oldest military decoration presently in use. Whereas the Purple Heart was the first American service award or decoration made available to the common soldier and is specifically awarded to any member of the United States Armed Services wounded or killed in combat with a declared enemy of the United States. And whereas many former residents of Muskogee have made the ultimate sacrifice in giving their lives in the cause of freedom and numerous combat wounded veterans currently reside within this city and contribute to the community uh, in countless ways. Whereas chartered by an act of Congress, the mission of the military order of the Purple Heart is to foster an environment of goodwill among the combat wounded veteran members and their families, promote patriotism, support legislative initiatives, and most important, make sure we never forget. And whereas we appreciate the sacrifices of our Purple Heart recipients have made in defending our freedoms and believe it is important that we acknowledge them for their courage and show them the support they have earned. Whereas the city of Muskogee wishes to pledge its strong support to the military order of the Purple Heart and for those who put their lives at risk in the service of their country and their fellow citizens. Therefore, the Honorable Mayor and City Council of the City of Muskogee of Oklahoma do hereby proclaim that Muskogee is a Purple Heart city. I will make a motion uh, that that goes into effect and entertain a second. Second. We have a motion and a second. And after we vote, I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Don Nichols, uh, who is here, uh, to give remarks. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion from the council? Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. And I also want to thank uh, Mr. George Abel, a former police officer here with the city of Muskogee, for his assistance in getting us this information. I'm going to ask Mr. Nichols if you join us at the podium at this time. Thank you, Mayor. It's my pleasure to be here, and thank you, uh, city of Muskogee and council members. You made us feel right at home when we came to Muskogee, Oklahoma, to try to start this chapter. <clears throat> a little information about myself. I worked at the regional office for about 30 years as a finance officer and budget officer. So been around veterans ever since I was wounded September the 14th, 1966, and spent a career with the VA, did a little work for the Military World Purple Heart, traveling around doing job fairs and business opportunity summits and run my own business. But uh, I'll tell you, there's no city anywhere that's treated us any better the military or the purple heart than the city of muskogee has may i read this plaque yes sir the military or the purple heart special recognition award is bestowed bestowed with pride to the city of muskogee oklahoma for your dedication and support honoring america's combat wounded veterans becoming the purple heart city presented by the patriot members of the jack c montgomery chapter 617 military or the purple heart mayor uh the we have uh, some ladies with us tonight. We call them the Purple Heart Ambassadors, and I think they have a presentation they'd like to make. Ladies, if you'd come forward. Hello. I'm Kay Howard. This is Carol. And I'm Jerry Sheehan. Carol Housley. We are ambassadors of the Purple Hearts, and we want to present to the City Council our Purple Hearts, uh, making Muskogee a Purple Hearts city. Wonderful. And ladies and gentlemen, I will join you to present you with the uh, proclamation declaring that Muskogee recognizes or is recognized officially today as a Purple Heart City. <laughs> you gonna let me in, 
briefly, Don. <laughs> <laughs> Item number three. Discuss and take action to create an economic incentive program which earmarks a certain percentage of incentive funds awarded to be set aside in a separate fund to be later used to fund small business incentives. Members of the council, this was my agenda item, but we will not take action on this tonight because I'm still collecting data and working with staff to be certain that when we present the program, we have all of our numbers in a row. So we will take no action at this time. We will schedule uh, this item to appear uh, at some point on an agenda in the future, even if it has to be a special call. Item number four. Receive report on a recent higher education scholarship symposium held at the Martin Luther King Jr. Dream Center and discuss the effectiveness of letters of recommendations issued to high school students at both Hilldale and Muskogee Public Schools. So we recently participated in a program at the Martin Luther King Jr. Community Center where two of our young people made their presentations about the scholarship opportunities that were available uh, to all students. Uh, it was presented by two Muskogee High School students, uh, and I made a presentation to them that night, uh, that afternoon rather, that basically said for their efforts, what the mayor would do is sign a letter of reference uh, for those individual students directly from the mayor. Uh, and I think that's important because we want to say to our young people all across our community in Muskogee, whether they go to Muskogee High or Hilldale or otherwise, uh, that they have the support of their council. They have the support of their mayor. Uh, we can stop the hemorrhaging of young people wanting to flee from Muskogee sometimes if we just show the right support to them that they have a community that loves them enough to express in writing uh, and through a signature that says we support them. They introduced something to us called a brag letter. And what that letter is, is a letter that brags about all of their accomplishments. And we want to make as part of their uh, accomplishments uh, that they have the letter of the mayor supporting them so that they can be successful and that they can achieve their goals and their aspirations. Uh, we have asked, uh, we started with Muskogee already, we will be visiting with Hilldale and any other school districts in the city limits and say to them that all we ask uh, is that they be able to go through their guidance counselor uh, to get the letter uh, that'll have my signature on it. And I think that'll go a long, long way uh, to accomplish our goal long term. Live, work, and play. We say live, work, and play like we want other people to come here, but we want to take care of the ones we have already. Uh, be certain that they love Muskogee, and that includes our young people because they are not tomorrow. Our young people are today. And that is just a report uh, so that we can be uh, clear that when you see these activities happening, uh, we brought it to the community's attention that we are concerned about our young people. Any questions before we move on to item number five? Thank you. Item number five. Receive report, discuss, and take action on community illumination, including but not limited to street lights. Councilor McGee. Uh, yes, this is my agenda item, and I brought this agenda item because we got a lot of complaints from the citizens about why the city is so dark. So I reached out to the city manager, uh, hoping that he would be able to answer a few questions. He did say that he would bring in Mr. Thompson, if I'm saying his name right, from OG&E, that would explain the process as to uh, how we get uh, our lights turned on if there's something broke or the light is not working. So, uh, if I may. Uh, yes, Mr. Miller. Yes, uh, Councilor McGee, uh, we did talk uh, over the weekend and, and uh, just for general background purposes, um, street lights in the city, uh, almost all are maintained by our partner at OG&E. There's a few uh, decorative street lights uh, that the city maintains. But for the most part, when you see a street light around town, it's an OG&E street light. We've got a partnership with them to maintain the street lights. 
so we work with them. Uh, if a light goes out, we have a process with the city to notify OG&E. Citizens can do that uh, directly as well. Uh, so if there's an area of town that's dark and has street lights that aren't on, that's something that Mr. Thompson's got a program in place to, to, uh, to work on and to, to get those light bulbs <coughs> changed out. Um, I'd like to ask him to come forward and talk a little bit about how our partnership works between OG&E and the city. We want anybody that, that knows of a street light that needs to be repaired to be able to, to turn in uh, and make sure that we're able to, to get those on and make sure that OG&E knows to, to, uh, to get that replaced. Hello, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, just to go over how the street light per program works, OGNE has uh, rates uh, that have been filed with the Corporation Commission. <laughs> Explain our street light program, and uh, it lines out in there how much uh, each component of the street light uh, will cost our municipalities. The pole has a cost if we have to set one. If we set a street light on an existing pole, uh, there's no pole charge for that. So what og &E, we will go in, we put the cap, capital uh, expenditure out to install the streetlight uh, system, and then we will also maintain it, and the electricity is part of that uh, monthly bill also. How we get uh, streetlights uh, put in is uh, usually the, uh, either the uh, public works department uh, finds a location that they need a light, or the uh, uh, citizens will petition uh, for a new light, they will request that from the city, and then the city will request light from us. Uh, the city is the one pays the monthly bill on the lights, so we need uh, authorization from them to uh, install a new one. Any broken lights, like Mike said, I think uh, we've uh, got a really good system with the, uh, the uh, public service, uh, public works department on uh, for they are notified of uh, lights that are not working. They uh, will turn those in, uh, and they, I believe they are logging those so they can keep track of them also. Thank you. Uh, we also talked about maybe a report that we'll be able to get uh, either monthly or, or quarterly to let us know what's been prepared from Public Works, correct? Yes, Council McGee uh, asked me if we could just keep a, a running list of the, the requests that we have made to OG&E and, &E and their status, and we do maintain that list already, and so that's something that we can do uh, on, on a quarterly basis. I can include in my reports to Council so you can see, and obviously if you see a light that's, that's out and not on that list, you know we need to turn that in. Um, and there, uh, our list will not be, uh, I will say this, our list will not be all-inclusive necessarily. Those are the ones that we've turned in as a city. But individual residents and citizens can talk directly to OG&E to, to tell them about a streetlight as well. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. McGee. Any other questions on this item for, on tonight? Thank you. Item number six. <coughs> Consider approval of the reappointment of James Gully to the Merit System Board to serve a two-year term beginning January 1, 2022 and ending on December 31, 2024 or take other necessary action. This is my item to the council. James Gully has served on this merit board uh, and he is eligible to be reappointed and I'm going to move for approval that he be reappointed as said. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek <clears throat> Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Thank you. Item number seven. Consider approval of the reappointment of Daryl Russell to the Merit System Board to serve a two-year term beginning January 1, 2022 and ending on December 31, 2024, or take other necessary action. Same as has been said with count, uh, former Councilor and Deputy Mayor James Gully, Daryl Russell has also served on this board faithfully and is eligible for reappointment, and that is my motion. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Further discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Item number eight. Consider approval of the appointment of Robert Gaddy to the War Memorial Trust Authority to serve a three-year term, replacing William Barnes, beginning February 1, 2022, and ending on January 31, 2025, 
or take other necessary action. Deputy Mayor Reed. Yes, most definitely. This is uh, an ideal appointee for uh, the War Memorial Trust. Mr. Gaddy is a uh, U.S. Marine. He served in the U.S. Marine Corps, and also he is a retired uh, pharmacist in our community. Many of you know about Gaddy's Drugs, uh, served our, our neighborhood for many years. He's retired from there, and so he's the ideal candidate to uh, serve on this War Memorial Board. He wants to help uh, see them get you know, back to the uh, status that they need as far as the uh, placement and, and movement of the uh, bad fish and so forth, so I think he would be a great asset to this board. So uh, it is my uh, honor at this time to appoint Mr. Robert Gaddy, and that is my motion. A second. We have a motion and a second on item number eight. Further discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Jerry Creed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Item number nine. Consider approval of the appointment of Marsha Wiseman to the Street Advisory Commission to serve a five-year term replacing Jacina Brown beginning February 1, 2022 and ending January 31, 2027 or take other necessary action. Councilor Reynolds. Uh, this is my item. Uh, we all know Marsha. We've enjoyed working with her and I think she'll make a great addition to the Street Advisory Commission. And with that, I would like to, to uh, put her up for a nomination at this time. Second. second. We have a motion and a second on item number nine. Further discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. We have one citizen sign up to speak to us tonight, Mr. Tyler Evans. I'll ask that you come to the microphone, give us your name and your address, and you will have three minutes. Mr. Ma uh, Mayor? Yes. Uh, I would like to suspend the rules and let's vote on this. This is not an agenda item, but it's a very important item. And Mr. Uh, Evans is going to talk about the COVID-19 here in Muskogee and surrounding areas and give us a good update. And I want an unlimited time for him so he can educate us tonight. Because like I say, we got these masks on tonight. It's no joke. It's real. It's back. You know, it's just here. So I want Mr. Evans, I, I call for this, you know. So I want him to give us a good update of what's going on here in the city of Muskogee. Mr. Tucker, can we have an unlimited time? I think we have to designate the what the time is. Well, the rules are set by you all, uh, by policy. And so if you were to suspend the rules, you can suspend them indefinitely uh, for purposes of allowing no time limit, uh, or you can restrict it. Totally up to you. Okay. I second the motion. We have a motion and a second for Mr. Tyler to give us an update on tonight. Uh, let me be clear. Are we engaging in dialogue? Absolutely not. We cannot engage in dialogue. Because uh, there can be no discussion because this was not on the agenda. And so um, just as any member of the public could sign up and speak to the council, that's what Mr. Evans is doing with regard to COVID-19. No commentary, only listening. Roll call. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Mr. The name is Tyler Evans, address 520 Court Street here in Muskogee. According to the state of Oklahoma Health Department's website, as of last Monday on the 17th, the city of Muskogee had uh, 1,023 active cases of COVID. Uh, our total number of deaths that have been attributed to COVID is up to uh, 209. Uh, for the state of Oklahoma on Saturday, there were 13,571 new cases of COVID. On Sunday, there were a little over 12,400, and today they had 7,679 new cases reported. So I'm hoping this downward trend that we're seeing from the weekend is, continues to go down. Uh, to kind of put that in perspective, last January when we had the large spike of COVID, uh, the highest number over seven day average was 4,252 cases per day. So we've essentially tripled that number uh, this go around. Earlier this month, I was on a conference call with our medical and health professionals across the state. Uh, they predicted that we would see a peak on January 19th. That's when the cases were really rising and going up. And then after that, we'd start seeing that trend uh, downward. Uh, they've that was a pretty good prediction. Uh, according to the data collected by John Hopkins, we hit an all-time high for the number of cases in Oklahoma on January 18th for 11,900 cases over that seven-day average. Uh, as I stated before today, we're at 7,679 cases, so we are seeing that trend to come downward, although we are still very high. 
We are seeing the impacts across the workforce uh, here at the city of, uh, city of Muskogee since Friday. Uh, and over the weekend, we've had reports of 10 positive cases so far today, and HR is waiting on another three to four uh, results to come in. Uh, last week, we had 28 new positive cases, and it was the same for the week before that, 28 new positive cases. So we are starting to see the impact in our departments uh, with people with COVID. Uh, the hospital and EMS is also seeing the impact from COVID. As we all know, COVID doesn't really discriminate or care what you do for a living. So it is taking an impact on our nurses, our doctors, and our EMS personnel. Uh, we have enough beds and space, we just don't have enough staff members to have a full crew uh, to staff those beds. EMS and the hospital have teamed up together to provide a treat and release on lower acuity calls. Uh, this allows for the systems to be, still be seen and diagnosed by a doctor through an iPad, and the medics at EMS will perform the needed procedures as a doctor requests them. Uh, this allows more systems to stay at home uh, and not be subjected to the ER, and it also allows uh, and assist with decompressing the ER and the number of people that's in that facility. Uh, as I stated before, this is for lower acuity calls. This is not for if somebody needs surgery uh, or needs a CT scan. Uh, these are for calls that really don't need a trip in an ambulance to ride all the way across town and to sit in the ER. Um, this is similar to a telemedicine type appointment. I'm sure most of you have done, you visited a doctor kind of through a webcam and seeing what was going on. Well, this allows them essentially to do the same thing, except now you have a trained medical professional by your side that's uh, uh, there to help you and assist you through that call and to do whatever <coughs> the doctor may need. So it really saves uh, our ambulances from having to transport people back and forth and really allows them to be more open for the higher acuity calls, the accidents, uh, the more serious priority calls uh, and allows them to be more free. Uh, as a reminder, if you need a test for COVID, the Muskogee County Health Department is providing testing at their location out there at 34th and R Line. Uh, besides national holidays, they're testing Monday through Friday, uh, 8 to noon every day. Uh, they're also providing vaccines Monday through Friday, 8 to 12. They close down for lunch and they're back open uh, from 1 to 4. We also still have the MLK Center vaccine pod going every Thursday from 9 to 6. All this comes at no cost. Uh, there's no cost to be tested. There's no cost to receive the vaccine through the Muskogee County Health Department. Uh, and that really kind of sums up uh, my presentation. If you guys have any questions, feel free to email those questions to me. Like I say, I've got the reports going. We have, we're tracking the numbers on a daily basis. Uh, still in talks with um, our partners with the Muskogee County Health Department, the Muskogee County Emergency Management, the hospital. Uh, like I say, we still get the numbers and the reports in. Um, like I say, I would recommend being careful uh, where you go, what you do, uh, and staying safe. It's a pleasure giving this presentation. Actually, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email or give me a call. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Item number 10. Consider an executive session to discuss and take possible action on the following. A, pursuant to Section 307B2, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, consider convening an executive session to discuss negotiations with the International Association of Firefighters, Local Number 57, and if necessary, take appropriate action in open session. B, pursuant to Section, th pursuant to section B4, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, consider convening an executive session to discuss all outstanding litigation involving the City of Muskogee as per the attached list, and if necessary, take appropriate action in an open session. Do we have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Second. Motion and a second to go into executive session. Roll call. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. We will now convene into executive session. All those who are not party to those items, we ask that you excuse yourself at this time. We will now reconvene from executive session. Roll call. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Here. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Here. Ivory Van. Here. Jamie Stout. Here. Evelyn Hibbs. Here. Alex Reynolds. Here. Stephanie Morgan. Here. Tracy McGee. Here. Tracy Hoos. Mr. Tucker. Uh, item 10A, pursuant to Section 307B2, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, the City Council did convene an executive session to discuss finalized negotiations between the International Association of Firefighters, Local Number 57, uh, after being briefed on the uh, status of those finalized negotiations, I think uh, it would be an ap appropriate motion to move approval of a 2021-2022 20, uh, collective bargaining agreement between the City of Muskogee and the International Association of Firefighters, Local Number 57. Do we have a motion to that effect on tonight? 
Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. Item B. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, one thing, I, one uh, editorial comment I will make is that uh, this section, all executive sessions relate in section 307. Um, in the agenda item, uh, the 307 was inadvertently left out. Uh, as a Scrivener's error, but this is simply a different section within the same, uh, different subsection within the same section, which is 307B of Title 25. Uh, the City Council did convene an executive session to discuss all outstanding litigation involving the City of Muskogee, uh, as referenced in the attached list. Um, you will notice that there was a duplication in the matter of Floyd Patterson. There was only one case, not two. That was simply another error. Um, at any rate, uh, after being briefed um, on the status of those cases, no action is necessary at this time. Mayor? Thank you, Mr. Tucker, for your uh, diligence on tonight. We are adjourned.